Welcome back to Cool Club's headquarters here in Scottsdale. We are here with Mark Timms, CEO and founder. And today we're also super lucky to have Marty Jertson, who is the VP of Fitting and Performance at uh, Ping. Welcome. Oh, it's great to be here and excited to talk about uh, uh, all of our products and features and how we're helping golfers play better just like you guys. Cool. Yeah, sure, we sure. did a video recently and stuff on, on basically the robot data and stuff, which was fantastic, by the way. Um, you know, it was kind of interesting to do that, but you know, we didn't hear about the details on how we got those information and then what, what, what actually you did to it and what the uh, special things you changed that gave us those numbers. Yeah, so, so today we can, uh, yeah, exactly, Mark, we, the we, we can go yeah. to the why, the <laughs> right. why and the how. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. I think this is this podcast we want, um, you know, obviously it's a, it's a good forum for people to kind of promote the product and we're showing, we're showing performance stuff, but I think people like to hear the real nitty gritty information mm. of like you know like you say why it works all, all the tech that goes into it you spend hours on doing it and then somebody doesn't hear about it and they just hit it so i think guys want to dig into that we've got geek heads who love that stuff so as deep as you can go is good absolutely yeah no i'd love to it is fun we spend so much time like designing it every little nook and cranny every one one thousandth of an inch in club design matters so it's uh yeah, we, we can dive pretty deep today. Okay, so our focus, we're going to do a kind of a mini series with you, I guess. Um, we're going to start with I-230 here. Uh, we'll, we'll drop on to another one of your products from Ping, which is going to be Ball Namic in another yeah. episode. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say the name of the new product, but we're <laughs> going to touch on the new product when it's time. Yeah, yeah, that will um, be explosive. The new line, yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's start with I-230 here today. Tell us a little bit about the design. Tell us, you know, where it came from and, and, and how, it, how it all comes together. Yeah, I think that the I-230 is an extension and a continuation of our I-Series line. The I-210 kind of had a, had a cult following. It, it kind of blew up and it got stronger as it was out there longer in the market, which is very rare. You know, usually you kind of no, launch I still a got product. Plans. They're still playing it. They're exactly. Waiting, they're waiting and waiting. And People love it and they've been waiting yeah. for, I don't know, close to four years now, you know, yeah. since the I-210 launched. So it, it's one of those products that grew in momentum after it was out in the market more. I think the fitters loved it because it generated spin. Uh, it wasn't too low spin. It had really good distance control. And the golfers loved it. And they told all their buddies. And then it kind of grew into a, a cult thing. And so the 230, we didn't want to stray too far from all those core principles on the 210. I think that's what golfers need to hear, right? Uh, if you've played I-210s and you have been waiting, right. this is going to be a seamless transition, but we've made some beautiful upgrades to it in, yeah. in, in some things. And so, you know, I think when you when you look at the product here, it has a beautiful form factor to it. And one thing we've always done in our I-Series irons, the I-210 and some of our other irons, is we've used what's called a C we call it a CTP, but that stands for Custom Tuning Port. And we've always, always used that. We, we know, just like you guys do, Mark, we've talked about this a lot, how important it is in the fitting and then as you build your product to fit the overall weight and specifically the swing weight you know and we hold very tight tolerances on the swing weight and so traditionally we've used in the i210 iron a really big ctp weight that goes right in the middle of the iron that's squishy um, and that we've used that to weight the clubs now some clubs would get a little heavier one and some clubs would get a little lighter yeah. one depending on head weight tolerances build specs etc so what we've done in the I-230 is we've concealed, it still has that, we, we're calling it activated elastomer. It's underneath the bottom kind of flange of the iron there. Yeah. But that goes in at the same density and, and uh, gram weight during the manufacturing process of the iron now. So it has, it's more consistent and it's lighter okay. density and it's bigger. So one of the ironic things about the I-230 iron is that it is a very strong uh, and hard, quote unquote, hard metal. Yeah. It's a 17-4 and we heat treat it really strong. We call it hyper 17-4. Okay. So for desert golf, yeah. I think you've mentioned this, <laughs> you're on the desert, right? yeah. you know, you get, you're, you're, you're bending dings. is a little more work, right? You're a little more <laughs> yeah. work out bending them, right? Exactly. Go back so, to your place um, and use a hammer. <laughs> but we optimize, you know, we do try, we do optimize that through the yeah. notch design and everything. But yeah, we, we, we whack on them pretty good to, to get them to move, but we have a lot of range engineered into it. We have our full color code range, you know, you, right. you can go nine different color codes on the iron. So, um, but one of the, the, the uh, ironic things is that you can have this club with a very strong hyper 17 four material, but it feels very soft. Right. I mean, the thing that people love about the two tens and now the two thirties, they feel even better is that they feel soft. So how do you do it? You know? Yeah. And it's really, what's fun about this iron is you can think about it almost like a, how a golf ball is constructed where it has different layers to it. Right. Yeah. You got, obviously you got the facing grooves. It's super hard. But then right behind that, when you look at the cross section, 
we have this huge uh, thermoplastic elastomer that covers a lot of the face. And when you make impact with the ball, that thermoplastic elastomer gets activated from the flexing of the face. And then th that controls the vibrations and the damping. And we get to, we get to uh, you know, uh, attenuate frequencies we want yeah. to and damp frequencies that we don't. And we do a lot of cool modal analysis. It's like a fancy way for when we're in the CAD world to kind of vibrate the head, see right. what frequencies are coming from where, and manipulate geometry and, and where we have elastomer to damp things. So what does that mean to the golfer? You, you get an iron that's um, strong yeah. and, and firm, but it feels soft and feels mushy. And even the, some some players might have noticed the I-210s, the long irons got maybe a little tinky in like the four or five iron. We've gotten totally rid of that with the 230s. Like the, the long irons feel just as mushy as the short irons. Oh, yeah. yeah well, I think sound, sound is huge, sound right? Is so the sound makes a huge difference to feel. It's probably 90% of the feel. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we're actually thinking about adding a, a sound test, you know, and putting up a microphone. So Dr. Mace is working with me on that to kind yes. of see what the difference is. Because you can see the frequencies Absolutely. that are bad ones pretty quickly, right? Yeah. You know, you yeah. see where the nasty sounds come. And, yeah. You know, for drivers or for irons as well. I mean, yeah. Why not? It's one of the toughest things is is to is to design product that has the you know inertial properties, performance properties, save weight, but still have it sound good. And we've made a big investment of that in all of our product categories, uh, even our new new family that's uh, that's going to be launching in the springtime. I think like you, like you say, you know, especially with different um, build process, you could make a golf club that is is great, the best golf club on the planet, but if it sounds horrible nobody's going to play it. Mm. So you've really got to work on that sound stuff. And like Mark touched on, Dr. Tom Mace has kind of approached us a little while ago and said, hey, like, I think I can get some good information here and we yeah. can actually find out what, what people like the sound of. And I mean, you already know, like yeah. you guys, the major manufacturers, know what people like the sound of and you do player testing. But yeah. I think the world would be interested to hear, you know, why do we like the sound of this club versus yeah. this club? Yeah. Mark, Mark brought, up, brought up a great point. I mean, if, if any of the, any listeners at home want to try it, just put on noise canceling headphones. Right. Go yeah. putt with two different putters. One that goes, you know, our old one A ping. Or, or better, yeah, get, get a you know an old top flight ball in a, in a yeah. blotter or something. You won't be able to tell you, the difference. You can't tell the difference with the headphones so, on. So yeah, yeah. you know, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. So so the two ten iron. I mean, it's very focused on the feel. So it's it's, it's more consistent feel throughout the whole set, especially the long irons compared to the two ten. And what's fun is just such a major multi-material construction. So you look at it, it looks clean. Right. Um, so we have that, that big activated elastomer in the middle. So what, what does that mean compared to, for example, if you made this iron a forged iron, right? So it's just kind of, you know, one direction stamping. You know, you just have one pull direction you, you, you have as a designer is we're trading about 24 grams of mass from low forward that would normally be steel for three grams of this uh, elastomer material, thermoplastic elastomer. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so you're, 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 you know, difference. it's a one to eight, eight yeah. to one ratio there of weight saving. So you're saving 21 grams there. And then this kind of badge, it's kind of a badge at the top. That also has a, a, a thermoplastic urethane backing behind it. And then it's a stainless steel badge, uh, very durable. So we're also, that's kind of covering that that weight that's that that's hidden in the pocket. It's actually there. stainless in the back there too. Yeah. That's interesting because most of the companies use a lot of them using plastic now. Which yeah, sometimes don't sound so good. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, it may sound okay if you're in the front of the club, but you tanking balls around the range, it sounds funny. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. So that's a steel. It's more durable too when the club's banging. Exactly back. from so, dinging in your bag yep. and things of that nature. Um, and, and so you have a lot of you, you have a bunch of layers there. You have some kind of um, you know um, damping tape that's that's kind right. of uh, covering the whole back of the face. So. Just a very multi-material iron. And then to weight them now, we're using a combination of higher density tungsten and weight in the toe. And then we counterbalance that, that when we build them uh, with the equal weight in the hosel to make sure their center gravity oh, is staying very centered. Okay, so you're, when you're, yeah, that's really cool. Is that, is that yeah. the, drop the CG in, in the right spot, right? Exactly, yep. And you can actually manipulate CG if you really wanted to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. The tungsten. Sure you get some tour players asking that question. <laughs> We've done a little bit of that, yeah. <laughs> the drop-in weights you're talking about during the build process. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And, and, and when we build them, obviously, we have a, a algorithms in our assembly right. to make sure they're balanced. Yeah. You know, so yeah. yeah. So center gravity stay stay there. And that was one of the advantages of always putting the weight right in the middle is in the, when we designed them, we designed them right. to, you know, you put a lightweight or a heavyweight, the CG stays where we want it to. Yeah, but it doesn't help the forgiving part. Does exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we spread more mass to the perimeter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the Micromax grooves. Man, the micro max grooves are amazing. I, I did the player test with them. We, we, we at Ping, we've done a lot of research on grooves over the years. 
Um, and really, what problem is it is it solving for this golfer? I mean, the I-230 is an iron that feels good. It generates the right amount of spin for the player. And then we won. This is what you guys saw in your robot testing. We want to be a very high precision iron. This is for the tour players, the better players that need to control their carry distance down to, you know, sub one yard accuracy, you know, in terms of like, that's what they're calculating their numbers to, right? Yep. And so the micro max grooves are meant to kill flyers, right? So you have oh, okay. moisture on the golf ball. This is maybe a little less important in Arizona, but you can right. still ha it could still happen, right? Uh, you have a little moist, you, you're playing on a dewy morning, you got water on that golf ball and you're hitting that pitching, you're hitting a pitching wedge, for example. With the I-210 iron, if you're in that scenario, and the way we do this test at Ping is we'll be on the range and we, we take, we put golf balls literally in a Home Depot bucket full of water. Pull them out of the bucket, stick them pull, on the tee. Yeah, we have a little <laughs> jig that goes yep. down and pulls them out, we put them down and we do, we, we do player testing with it too. Our robot sprays it with controlled mist, but we, we have the players do that and then they dunk the club. So the club is soaked, the ball is soaked. It's like it's equivalent to it's raining. Maybe you uh, ought to do a test like that and kind of see how the wedges work. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. So with the pitching wedge on the I-230, um, in that wet condition, the I-230 with the Micromax grooves was a combination of grooves that are spaced closer together and the finish on it, is, it has a property called hydrophobicity, which means the water is allergic to the surface. And so this is like a Gore-Tex jacket or... Oh, the or, spray okay. on your car. Right, when right. you get it in a car wash and it just beads off. Exactly. Yeah. Or tef like oil on a Teflon pan, right? It's like the same property happens. The water yeah. beads up really tight. And you can actually measure, huh. the, measure this. You take a picture of the water under a... a you That's know, really uh, cool. um, high magnif magnification uh, photograph, and you can see it more beating like this, and it's yeah. more allergic to the surface. Right, so, so as you swing it, the thing just dries out automatically. It just slides right off the club, right? It dries out when you're swinging <laughs> it, and then during the impact <laughs> interval, we've you know right. we've gotten our at thirty thousand frames a second phantom camera. You can see the water droplets actually shooting out of the grooves faster while the ball is interacting yeah, with that's the cool. face. So the result is with the I two thirty. When you do that dunk test, it retained, uh, I think our spin in the dry was like 10,000, and our spin with the wet was 9,800. Wow. So it retained like 98% of the spin. And with the I-210, you do that with a pitching wedge, it, the spin dropped to 6,900. So it lost like 30% of the spin. That's great technology ad. I don't play Absolutely. in the rain anymore. So if, yeah. I, if I do go to Scotland again, though, I'm bringing I'm yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. <laughs> But it does help you in the rough. So all all grass has moisture in it. Right. And we know this. I mean, we have Stan over hitting pit shots in what we think is perfectly dry conditions. We get the phantom camera out. Right. And you see the water droplets like shooting up yeah, right yeah. into getting between the ball and the face. So it, so it does help uh, your flyer scenarios in, in just like kind of light rough. I think that's Things the kind that of stuff. That's, that's some awesome technology. That I don't oh, think people yeah. have any idea that you guys go and test that kind of stuff on a golf club. Yeah. Like they're just putting it in the bag, but that's that's a big change. How many RPMs was it between pitching wedge to pitching wedge? Uh, I mean, it, we so we we retained 98% yeah. with, the, with the I-230, and with the I-210, we were losing 30%. Right. right, so it was, it was only it was like it's going from ten thousand to seven thousand. You're controlling your distances with a wedge. Oh I mean, that's yeah, massive. If yeah. It spins or it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and this is testable in a fitting bay, right? You, right. you get a, a spray. I just bottle. need to get a phantom camera, which is on my wish list for next <laughs> yeah, year, by yeah, the yeah. way. Exactly. To really see the cool stuff. So yeah. I have played around with those in the past. It's yeah. really cool stuff. Yeah. To watch that. Exactly. You know? I love the uh, the I two ten. You know, from a fitting perspective, was that one that you can go to where you know you're going to get spin. Yeah. But you had all that forgiveness. Yeah. And I think that's what kind of gets lost with some of these really game improvement irons. They're strong lofted. They're designed yeah. for distance. Um, and sometimes you just need, you know, a slower swing speed to get some spin, get some launch, and just like see ball flight and know the yardage they're going to carry. Yeah. Um, yeah. So obviously this sounds like it's down that road. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's not uh, – I, I mean, low spin and irons can be good for some players because it helps them hit it further, right? right. But yeah. this player, they're bringing the speed to the table. They, they don't necessarily need that. And we have some great fitting tools to help kind of find out what is the optimal spin. I think, you know, only high speed players can get a thousand times the, the club number, right? So yeah, seven yeah. iron, seven thousand, right, et cetera. Right, right. I mean, as speed that's, goes, that's tour average. Right? That is tour it's average. Not, uh, exactly. The average player that we do. So with every day. Um, yep. the everyday player, I mean, the speed goes down. The speed helps drive that, create right. the spin. Yeah. And so, yeah, we do want that. But but we have, um, you know, different loft specs that we build these to. We have a loft spec called power spec, which is a calculated strengthening of the loft if you're trying right. to reduce spin for a certain player. 
And then we actually. So it's not just direct, like one degree all the way through. It's exactly. kind of spread out. You thought it through. Yep. And, yep. Yeah, like we I do, do it, like I should make the long angles a little stronger and just make them out more. Totally. Whatever, but, yep. Yeah. So we, we, we do that through modeling and player testing and things of that nature. And, and, but the, and then we have a retro spec, which is a relaxed <laughs> loft. Okay. This, this okay. is uh, kind of a secret, semi secret yeah, setting. You know, it's like you go to so. In and Out Burger. It's because people are, you know, steep and trap it and whatever. I mean, that, that's exactly. good for some people. Yeah. Especially if they get the shaft lean forward a lot. Yep. You know, and deal often it. I, yep. did, I did a lot. I'm of, the opposite. I don't need any bounce. I don't <laughs> think divots. I210s for juniors. I did a lot of retro mm. spec with, you know, because they were kind of lighter headweights too. It was perfect. perfect. Like build them light, build them high lofted, and let yeah. kids hit it high. So, yeah. That was cool. But this set is, I think, our, is really focused on the gapping. And, um, you know, so this is our best gap set. It's not a very exciting thing to talk about, but but you know, for your for your player with 110 miles an hour, uh, 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 kind of uh, ball speed in seven iron, they're right. going to gap right there at like 11 yards per club, and that's a good rule for gapping. Is you take your seven iron ball speed, divide by 10, and that should be like your perfect gapping, right? So for me, I'm 130 seven iron. Right. I get my space in between my irons 13 yards. You know, yeah, mine's, one, I've I've always messed my. I try to get mine to 15. But I, but I strengthen the long irons and weaken the short yeah, ones there to do go. that. Yeah. Because I figure I don't still have my clubs on my back. But. Oh, I or you got 150 ball speed in your seminar. No, you're, I don't. Yeah, that's what's wrong with that. With that math, I'd be uh, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good rule is, you know, if you're 100 yeah. miles an hour, ball speed, seven iron, 10, 10 yards. Yeah. You know, so it's it's a nice little like thing to remember. Yeah, I've never heard that. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, we, I, I've done, used to for a while, you know, especially like ladies and seniors don't know how far they hit it and stuff. Just kind of put up a sheet and, and show them kind of the differences and distances. And, and as you get down to lower club head speed, you know, people swing in six iron or seven irons at you know sixty five miles an hour. You know that comes in like five yards. It makes, yeah. Yeah. It makes total well, sense. I've never thought of it like yeah. that. But you always battle. You know, right. you lose irons as you get you get older. Or well, everyone thinks ten or... yards between clubs, right? Yeah. Well, wait yeah. a second. You know, if you hit it three hundred is the longest one, and your shortest one's eighty. How's that work? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's okay if you're you know ladies and seniors is great. You know, <laughs> you know, you, yeah. your longest one's you know one hundred and ninety, and your shortest ones you know. 80 or so, it's easier. So Yeah, and, and the slower you swing it, the more um, the the gapping should be based on rollout, right? right. Yeah, like yeah, you can have true. some clubs right. kind of get squeezed a little closer and carry, but they'll roll out yeah. much right. further, obviously. Right. So those are kind of things to keep in mind. But but we've really focused on the gapping. We have a partnership with Arco, so we have we, we get to data mine a lot of data from on-course play. And so this is really fun is that we've always cared a ping about like, hey, you know, we fit you, go play it on the course, we'll make adjustments. Now we get to measure that, and That's we great. have literally hundreds of millions of shots that we have data science in. Yeah, I remember mining. you mentioned that to me. I remember you mentioned, in, uh, you know, you, you got the draw driver, right? And, exactly. And, and, but the majority of people still hit it right. Yeah. So we need to go draw, right? <laughs> exactly. draw. We, we, do same, we do the same sort of thing, actually. We're going to start doing kind of online fittings and helping people, you know, select clubs and stuff. And, and one of the parts, the most important parts of that, actually, is just data mining all our fitters. Yes. You know, this exactly. kind of spin range and launch angle and stuff, you know, what drivers work the best? Yep. Because um, we can look at a robot data all day long, and that is very helpful. Yeah. But, you know, what, car, what you know, all well, our fitters, works, yeah. you know, you're 70 yeah. miles an hour, who, who did they yeah. fit? What clubs work best yeah. at that speed? You want, you want to marry the robot data with right, what you're seeing experientially exactly. and kind of marry, you know, Right. And, it's just and, both of them. It's not, intersect you those two, 100%. Them, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, speaking about marrying things together, uh, let's uh, let's wrap this one up and let's talk about ball dynamic in the in the next episode. Excellent. All right. Cool. Perfect. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right. See you.